How's everyone doing today? My name is Dan with Woodbridge Workshop. Today we're going to be building a Wharton Escherich inspired three leg stool. It's got cherry turned legs and a walnut sculpted seat. Should be fun. Stick around. All right, so we're going to start off here on the joiner and the planer. We're going to clean up one face. Then uh, once it's good to go, we're going to clean up the edge so we have a nice clean 90 degrees. Make it a little easier here when we uh, take it to the miter saw. I'm going to clean up the end so that everything is measured off of a nice consistent reference. Measuring it out, it's just under two inches thick. We're going to take that and use that as the uh, width of the cut for all the individual pieces. So then we end up with just shy of two by two blanks. There's going to be three cut. These three are going to be the uh, three primary legs. And then you're going to see we're going to do just about one inch. That's the thickness that we're going to want for the individual stretchers. So we're going to take one of those pieces, cut it down on edge, and come up with two pieces that we can cut down later into the three uh, pieces that we need for the stretchers. Here you can see all of our stock. We have one, two, three legs and two pieces that will be used to make the stretchers. So here we're working with a 12 quarter piece of walnut. We're going to cut that down into two individual pieces. Then we're going to take over the joiner and planer and just like before, get them cleaned up. So here you can see we're going to run this one through the thicknesser. That way we have a good clean reference to work off of when we start laying our pattern out. It's going to glue it up. Since it's a a uh, 12 quarter board, we don't really have to worry about having a mortise and tenon to ensure connections between the two. There's enough material there. So after a little bit of math, we're able to lay out the three individual points so that we have 120 degrees offset from the center. There you are with the uh, 12 degrees. That's going to be the splay of the legs to make it a bit easier. We're going to make a jig using the miter saw, using it to cut down two uh, 12 degree pieces. I'm going to take those two pieces in a flat section of the plywood, attach them so that when we take this over to the uh, drill press we can put our walnut stock on it and actually have a nice angled consistent piece from, to reference off of. Alright here remember we uh, measured out for the 12 degrees so you take the 12 degrees put it in the uh, drill press bring it up and use the laser to ensure that you're lined up All right, so we end up over at the lathe and we're bringing the three pieces down into the round. Um, this is a uh, carbide cutter tool. It's uh, one of their roughers, but it helps bring it down to the round pretty quickly. Then we take out our calipers to start working on the actual tenon that'll go through the mortises and the seat blank. Just keep testing until you get a perfect fit. It's important to make sure that you have a good fit so that the seat will last a long time and not have any racking issues. The rougher uh, doesn't leave the cleanest of surfaces, so you'll see that we come back through afterwards and clean it up with a uh, skew chisel. And that leaves a nice solid finish that doesn't require as much sanding. So now that you've done that for all three legs, you're able to actually put it into the seat blank. A little bit more geometry and a little bit of creativity and you're able to lay it out to the shape that you ultimately want to cut out on the bandsaw. All right, here we are just cutting out the piece that we just laid out. Now that we've got it all laid out, we're able to take the uh, Arbortech turbo plane, uh, which I got to say I really like using. It gives you a lot of control that you, you, know, you might not otherwise have. If you try using the uh, cheaper grinding wheels, it'll take forever. If you use some of the more aggressive ones, it just doesn't have the finesse to actually bring things down evenly and consistently and leave a nice smooth surface. So uh, I've drilled two half inch reference holes, that way I knew once I was starting to get closer to my depth. I also didn't push the, uh, the drill press to punch the holes through for the three legs so that I could use those as additional depth reference marks as I was working my way down. And here you'll start to see the, uh, uh, the holes actually starting to come out as we start to hit our final depth. They're cleaning up the saddle a little bit, just working things through. Cleaned up the bottom as well and start to smooth it out, taking a bit more gentle cuts, make it easier to sand later. So here I put the legs into the uh, seat. This allowed me to trim the tenons down. I was also able to finally get a chance to sit in the seat and see how comfortable it was. I went back and forth a couple times with the turbo plane until it had a perfect fit. 
but that's not to say it doesn't require a bit of sanding. So here you see the uh, the contour sander from Arbor Tech. We're using that to actually sand the whole thing out. It cleans up all the left behind marks that you're not able to you know finesse out when you're using the turbo plane. Here I worked it up to about 320. Probably wasn't necessary since I actually was using a, a white bond poly, which could have stopped at 180. If you wanted to work with a little bit more of a uh, close to the wood feel and use an oil type of finish, you probably would have uh, wanted to take it up to 600. The contour sander does come with sandpaper that works its way up to 600. And here you can see I'm actually uh, using an extension on the drill to ensure that I have a nice line of sight from one point to the other. It ensures that the stretchers, when they're attached, have the you know the correct attachment. You don't have any. Um, and construction issues at the end once you've actually put all the pieces together. And here you can see I'm just doing the same type of turning that I did on the legs to the stretchers using the same calipers to make sure that we have a good uh, good connection. It's 5 eighths for the stretchers into the legs and it was inch and an eighth into the actual seat blank. Once you got the stretchers, the legs, and the seat done you're able to actually start gluing some things up. Now all the legs went in just fine with the exception of one of them but once I flipped it over went right in no issues. In order to ensure that this actually lasts a long time, what you want to do is put some wedges in. So you take the tenons before, on the legs before you actually put them in, cut a little notch, and uh, take some thin angled wedges and just, you know, hit them in there with a mallet once you're getting ready. After a little bit of sanding and a flush cut saw to get those wedges cut out, it was ready for the finish. The cherry started to really pop, but the walnut looked absolutely fantastic. Um, one of the good things about the wedges is it also allows you to have an offset color, sort of tie the top into the bottom at the same time. Here I used walnut wedges, or um, walnut wedges into the cherry tenons, and uh, all in all, I think it came out pretty good. Thanks for watching.